Jason, uh, welcome to Nielsia Dairy. Um, we're making this film to show you uh, how we work with cheese and to show you how some of the things have changed since uh, the coronavirus outbreak. Shortly you'll see the work that goes on behind me. Now, to give you a bit of context, uh, we're in southeast London, uh, underneath the railway line that terminates at London Bridge. Uh, and even though now this is very much our headquarters, uh, this isn't where we started. So Niels Yadderi started in uh, the late 70s, in 1979, in Covent Garden. Uh, and we started by uh, selling and making cheese underneath the Covent Garden shop. Now, a lot has changed in those 40 years. So all the work that we do with British cheesemakers now happens here. You will see the, see the work that goes on. Each part will be introduced by a different, different member of the wholesale and export teams. Some familiar faces, some people you've never seen before. Um, and you also join us at probably our busiest time of year, uh, the run up to Christmas. Right, so I'm here to talk about the Mature Red Leicester. So um, my, myself and my old colleague Mariana started to do a bit of an experiment on this cheese in 2017. So I had noticed that we weren't selling that many territorial cheeses in Europe and we wanted to sell more of this kind of cheese. Basically the Europeans were finding it a little bit too acid and crumbly, the general territorials range. Um, but they were kind of interested by the orange colour of the Red Leicester. Um, and because it already has a kind of more buttery texture, we thought it would lend itself to a more kind of deeper cheese, a little bit sweeter. So we went to select, uh, along with Yvonne, uh, in May 2017, a batch of Red Leicester that we thought would be suited to be matured for up to 12 months. Uh, and then we brought it back to London in July. And from July to November, Marion and I uh, looked after them, so rubbing them, turning them twice a week. And what we were trying to achieve is a cheese that's got a kind of much denser, uh, slightly drier texture, and a more like sweet, at times meaty flavors, a bit more something Gouda-esque. Um, you can see that here. So I've got a piece of the young Red Leicester, and you can see just by looking at it that it's quite uh, silky, buttery, soft. Um, um, creamy and then the mature red leicester as you can see um, just by looking at it is already looking much more dense and more kind of gouda like but nowadays I don't do any of the cheese care myself uh, my colleague in the cheese shift team do that and here is Gareth who is head of hard cheese to talk us about their work sure. Um, yeah, so basically when the, when the cheese arrives with us, um, we'll often get three or four batches in at the same time. And there's some preliminary work that takes place in the farm to identify cheeses that we think will be good for keeping and cheeses that we think should be sold young. Um, but when it arrives here, we, we sort of verify that, so we'll taste through every batch. Uh, occasionally we'll, we'll tweak things a little bit. Um, but um, but yeah, so some of that cheese that will be will be will be matured on, and what we're typically looking for there is something that's pretty stable in terms of its flavor profile. So you don't want any jagged edges, uh, nothing too wild. Uh, you also want something that's got a good body to it. Uh, so in other words, not carrying too much moisture, not something that's going to be a bit pappy, um, because generally speaking, if you age something like that out, that's when you're often encounter some pretty wacky flavors as well and we want to again avoid them. Um, so once we've decided that these cheeses will come into this room this is our uh, arch nine in our maturing rooms uh, so all of the mature red leicester lives here um, and we'll keep it um, until it reaches a year old so up to eight months we'll, we'll have it in here and the conditions are um, a little bit warmer than next door where we store a lot of our other hard cheese so it's about 11 or 12 degrees in here and very high humidity and not a lot of airflow um, and the cheese doesn't usually look like this so you can see there's like massive banks of it up here at the moment uh, and we've got it like this because we're getting close to Christmas now so space is at a premium um, but typically um, we'll 
double space these. So we'll only have cheeses here and here, and we won't have anything on this shelf. Um, the idea behind that being that we want the air to be able to move around the cheese a little bit, um, draw some of that moisture out, um, which ultimately is what, what, we're, what we're doing um, when we're maturing them, is just, is just slowly drawing moisture out of the cheese. Um, and yeah, what else to say? Um, they will be turned um, once a week um, to help the moisture within the cheese stay evenly distributed. Um, they will be brushed um, to help manage the buildup of cheese mites. Um, and then they'll be tasted by these guys and, and ultimately sold. Um, and yeah, that's it. So yeah, for me it was pretty great that what started a kind of uh, as a experiment uh, and ended up being something that was sold not only in exports in the European team but the whole of exports, wholesale and as the business as a whole. I think it's now quite a popular cheese so it's pretty cool. Uh, so this is obviously just one of our hard cheeses and Nathan is now going to talk you through our hard cheese range. Hi, I'm here to talk about uh, the hard cheeses that Nilshire Dairy selects and sells. Um, we're going to take Montgomery's as an example. Um, more commonly, our directors will uh, visit the farm, in this case a uh, farm in North Cadbury, and select cheeses based on the various markets that we sell to. So that could be uh, domestic wholesale, it could be American export, it could be our own shops, as well as uh, the mail order service that we do. Um, we tend to select more acidic, slightly younger cheeses for, say, America, and we tend to choose more savoury, brothy cheeses for the domestic market. Um, they will then come in and be received by the team here who we call Cheese Shift, um, and we'll have the cheeses allocated to the various markets, and then within that, um, so the department I work for is domestic wholesale, uh, we'll have our batches of cheese uh, for those customers and some of our customers will have again a more specific flavour profile that they're keen on. Um, so it's actually a customer that I'm going to select a cheese for later today, uh, maybe after the filming and um, yeah they, they'll want that kind of slightly drier, more uh, kind of more of a snap to the cheese but that kind of heavy umami brothy flavour. So that tends to be how we work with the selection internally of those cheeses. Um, it's also a note about the maturation is important because that's mostly what we do here. It's primarily with cheese maturers. Um, some cheeses, like the Montgomery's, come in with predestined markets. Uh, some cheeses come in and we sell that same profile across all the markets. But then some cheeses will sell at different age profiles. Um, and actually sell them as almost different cheeses. So if we look at the Kirkham's Lancashire as an example of that. So a few cheeses right here. So um, Kirkham's Lancashire, we tend to sell the younger profile, which will be what most people are more common with. Um, has that kind of uh, soft, kind of buttery, to me almost like kind of creamed butter and sugar for a cake kind of flavours with it. Um, really delicious cheese, almost good as a dessert cheese, good with things like stewed fruits or like apples cakes. But then we also do age the cheese on to around a year in age and that becomes a totally different cheese that we call mature Lancashire. Um, if you were to try the cheeses side by side they will be worlds apart, although they start off as the same cheeses. Um, we tend to talk about uh, cheese as a make of milk, um, make and maturation. Those three things tend to really affect the outcome. And here at the dairy, the maturation is one of the main things that we have agency over, both in hard cheese and soft cheese. 211 would have been what came in yesterday, right? This is our um, soft cheese arch. Cheeses arrive here from the farms from anything from about a week old to like three or four weeks old. And then Emmy and the team here work with them uh, and get them ready to sell to you guys. So the first stop for any cheese that comes in is this room. This is the drying room. Um, and in here we've got some Brightwell ash. These were made 
uh, on the 2nd of November, so super, super young. Um, and you can see that there's not, I mean, in terms of rind development, that ash is quite vivid still. There's not a lot that's gone on on top of those. So those live in here overnight. The aim is to sort of stabilize the cheese and dry out the cheese a little bit, remove some of the moisture so that we can handle them without damaging them and, um, and get them to a stage where they're more, slightly more stable. Um, depending on how they get on in there, they would, if they're ready to go and their rinds have been developed, then they will come along to either room three or room two. Slightly different conditions, slightly cooler, not as warm. Um, and then once they're ready to go, they will end up looking a little bit like this. So these are a week older and you can see that the rind on the same cheese, just a week older, has developed beautifully. Really nice geotrichum on there. Um, and ready to go. And then another thing that we do, another element of this aisle in terms of maturing the cheese, is the washed rind cheeses. So cheeses like Risley, which again come to us very young. You see this here, it's like a naked Risley. And the Risley that you know is probably something closer to this, a lot, lot darker. Uh, and what the guys in Cheese Shift do is they, they wash these cheeses three times a week in a, in a salt solution, like very little salt solution, 3% salt solution. Um, they wash them three times a week and that gets rid of this like white penicillium that you see. That stuff hates salt, so that will die away. And as that dies, dies away, the conditions in here contribute to uh, forming these rinds. So it encourages the humidity in here. They're aiming for about 100% humidity. That's really tricky to do. So it's usually about 98%. Um, but it will encourage the rind growth of these beautiful sticky orange rinds. Um, so you can see as well, it's a, good, it's a nice visual. So it's like, these are the youngest. I think they've actually already had like three washes. And then I think we're talking five washes and then nine washes. And I believe we don't start sending them out until 11 washes, but you know, it's all about how it tastes as well. So if we taste something that's tasting really, really good and it's only had nine washes, then it's ready to go. A little bit about like the positioning of this arch. I really like it. It's really clever because as cheeses move their way through the, uh, through the rooms and get ready, ready to sell, the, their last stop is room two and then straight down the corridor onto the packing line, so it's like a super uh, efficient way of doing things. So here in the production area in the arches, this is where all the wholesale mongers are cutting, wrapping, and labeling, uh, and putting cheese down the line for sales. Um, a lot of these mongers are highly trained. They've been doing this kind of work for quite some time. Um, as uh, being a trained wholesale monger with Neil's Yard Dairy, uh, hand wrapping, cutting cheese is the most important thing of all. Um, and as you can see in the background, uh, these are some, some mongers prepping for mail order. This is um, as we go down the line towards the boxing area. This is uh, the production line here. And as you can see, this is where all the cheese goes into crates for separate orders. And is, and is then sent down the line for further packaging, boxing, or if it's being sent to like a local restaurant in London, it's being put into certain crates and then picked up or delivered. Here we are down in the boxing area, and this is where a lot of the, the export happened. And so 88% so of Neil's Yard sales go down the line. 40% um, are uh, make up of uh, mail order. Wholesale makes up roughly 40%, export 30%, and mail order the remaining 20 to 30%. In 2018 to 19, wholesale orders were filled with about 32,000. Mail order going out was about 8,500, and uh, 630 export pallets were built and sent out. So we've, uh, we've already talked about the selection process that happens at the farms with our producers. That process continues when the cheese arrives with us here in Bermondsey. So every week we go through what we call our hard and soft cheese walkthrough. Um, this is a chance for the sales team, wholesale and domestic, or domestic and uh, export, to get together with the maturation team and literally walk through the arches, tasting cheese, 
uh, in, you know, just as a general exercise to understand what we're selling that week, but also to be able to find cheese for particular markets. So making sure that the right sort of profile of Stichelton is going to find its way to France, or that a Berkswell that's going to survive the journey across the water is being sent to America. Um, normal times, the entire team would get together with the maturation team, and so you'd have eight, 10, sometimes 12 people if we had visitors around, uh, would go do that. But right now, COVID times, that does not really, um, it's not really appropriate, it's not safe at this point. Uh, so we've pared it down. Uh, the hard cheese walkthrough happens with two people. Uh, Clara, who works in, uh, in our export team, and Gareth, who works in maturation, uh, they both happen to live in the same household, uh, and so it's easier for them to go through that process together. For soft cheese, instead of us coming to the cheese, the cheese comes to us now. So we've got this crate here that our soft cheese maturation team puts together every week. Um, all the batches that we would potentially be working with and selling this week come out to us in the office and we taste through there. And now for both soft and hard cheese, all of those tasting notes are uploaded digitally and the entire team has access to them. So even though we've had to kind of change the way we work, we still are able to fulfill this really critical part of what we do in tasting cheese on a weekly basis. And I guess the reality is we have a, we're lucky to have a team that's been together for quite some time now. We've gone through these walkthroughs literally thousands of times together and there's developed a, 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 a common language. So even though I'm not tasting the cheese every week, the fact that I've eaten this cheese for the past seven years and have been on the walkthrough with the same team multiple times, I have a pretty good understanding and can feel confident when I get on the phone talking to customers of what it is that the cheese tastes like. Uh, here we are at our Bermondsey shop. It's one of our three shops in London. It's based at our maturing facilities. You can see some cheese maturing right behind us. That's Apulbis Cheshire. And I'm going to talk you through what we do here, why we have a shop, and uh, a little maturing experiment that we're doing uh, right now. So, in CAD, we always have a space for uh, selling to the public, even at, uh, at their maturing sites. In Borough Market, started off as our wholesale site where we, people just knocked the door and uh, asked to, to buy some cheese after work. And from there, it became a shop. And so, since we moved to this space here, which is in, uh, in Bermondsey at the Apollo uh, business site, it's, uh, we have introduced uh, a little retail space where, uh, where the locals can, uh, can buy cheese and get what they need. We're doing a little experiment on uh, Brunswick Blue, which is uh, one of the cheeses that uh, we mature uh, in a most unique way. It's, uh, it's a cheese from Devon made by Ben Harris. Uh, that's a sheep milk cheese, used milk cheese, uh, made in a Roquefort style. Roquefort style would not really be rindless cheeses. Here we're doing an experiment to grow a rind of them and maturing different maturing conditions, different environments, which means different temperature and different moisture. And uh, our maturing team has uh, conducted uh, as maturity cheeses in all slightly different conditions. And what we're doing here is a kind of blind tasting to see what the people, what people prefer, what our, st our staff has uh, the chance to try them over the next few days. And we will have a little vote on uh, which one, uh, which one uh, is, uh, is the most delicious. And um, uh, as you can see, when we talk about maturing cheese, it's very, it's very easy to overthink things and think that it has to do with some kind of like uh, secret uh, trade. But you can see that the, the effect of the maturation of cheese are really apparent when you just look at them, like the, the different uh, level of blowing, the different uh, type of blowing, whether it's a kind of a cobweb blowing or a more a stride blowing, the different colors on the rind, and this will reflect in the softness of the cheese, the texture of the cheese, the flavor of the cheese. British blue cheeses are unique in their way because they are uh, rinded cheeses. A Stilton will never have, uh, will never have been wrapped during the maturation process. Uh, growing a natural rind will impart flavor to the cheese and uh, make the cheese uh, have a different texture because it will uh, stand in its own way. It also, as you can see, uh, gives um, an interesting uh, additional flavor because this, most of this rind will be edible and uh, it, it will uh, provide with uh, new interesting flavors for the cheese. So you've heard from the team now about all the different things that we do with our maturing arches. On the one hand we've got um, soft cheeses 
that we work closely with producers to turn into either a wash wine cheese um, from a cheese that perhaps was a penicillin uh, candidum base. Uh, we also take care of their cheeses when they come into the arch and so that they're ready. And Claire would have shown you how we mature Spark and Ho Red Leicester for the various markets and how that was really driven by consumers and was really driven by the needs of different markets. And then you would have heard about how we also select cheeses on the farm, where we visit the farm uh, once a month, once every couple of months, and we are selecting those batches that we believe um, are the most interesting and that we believe that our customers um, would most appreciate. So as we go through all of the work that we do on the selection and maturation part of the business, it's really important as well to understand that everything that we are doing is with the customer in mind. So when it comes to our packing team, for example, um, the care with which they are packing your order and the care with which we are also selecting those batches for specific customers or specific markets is really based on the feedback that we get from you. And hence, completing that feedback loop between the cheesemaker, Niels Yard Jerry, and the customer. Thank you very much for your continued support.